Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery, and today we're going to check out the Serbian bow made by Misko from Serbia. And it's got the defining tips from the artwork, um, this 14th century Serbian de design. Um, this design is quite prominent all over Eurasia during this time. Um, all the way from the Chinese to the Serbs, this bow design is seen. To be fair, the Serbs did use a mixture of bows, not just this, they had wooden bows, they had crossbows, they had hand cannons, um, and they have these kind of bows. And the designs do fluctuate a little. The T-Run, for example, is a slightly different design than the Despo design. And both of these are based on Serbian artwork. People like to call them horse bows, but um, if, if you look at the strong profile, I would call this a reflex, deflex, reflex. And then this, the tips are a little bit static, so I would say with static tips. Um, is it a recurve? It's slightly recurved. It's so negligible. Um, yeah, it's a recurve because the string does contact the CF, but it's negligible. Um, now, in terms of this bow, the we've got to talk about the history of this bow if we're going to be shooting it. This is based on the 14th century. During this time, you, of course, you've got the famous English worship of the French in the Hundred Years' War. But in the southeastern Europe, you got, you know, the Wallachians, the Ottomans, the Serbs, the Bulgarians, uh, you know, um, fighting each other. This is a fascinating time period, but it's kind of underlooked um, usually in English uh, speaking history. Um, but I strongly recommend people to read it because you got a mixture of units. Um, you got crossbowmen, you got, uh, you know, hand cannons, you got horse archers, heavy cavalry, you know, knights in shiny armor, and you got these uh, humble archers. It's just a mixture of units and I, I love this time period. So when it comes to the archery techniques from the Serbs, you see both the finger draws, variations of the finger draws and the thumb draws being used. Thumb draws typically seen on the horse back in the artwork, but then in the artwork for the foot archers, you see them using a two finger draw like this, um, almost like a Syrianos lock depicted in the, by the Byzantines, but without a lock, without a thumb lock. So it's just two like this. Maybe the lock was used for the heavier bows, Two finger draw reduces the pinch of the bow, but um, it's harder to pull on heavy weights. Um, so perhaps those bows were only like 50 to 60 pounds. I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, you also see standard thumb draws. So these bows can go up to 100 pounds or even 150 pounds. We're not too sure about the draw weights of these bows of that time period. But I'd assume you, if you want to take advantage of the, of the bows, uh, you don't want too heavy of a draw weight so that you can have a decent fire rate. So I think 100 pounds is quite reasonable, but you know, 150 pounds would be very rare of that time period. Um, especially with these composite bows, they're actually harder to pull uh, than an English longbow because they're reflexed initially. So when you're strong, it's got a much higher initial draw weight. Anyways, oh my God, it went through the target. Holy, look at that. It went through the target. Wow, the first two was good, and then I screwed up my third one. The first two were relatively close. So I'm gonna follow the Serbian artwork, which shows a two finger draw without a thumb reinforcement. Um, on a 100 pound bow, this is less comfortable, but you can do it, just less comfortable, but you get less pinch. So is that a trade off that I want? Let's see, two finger draw. Okay, now let's try it with three finger draw, see the difference. I definitely pick the three finger draw even though I get more pinch because I get an extra finger to take off some load out of the other two fingers. Especially for a long duration, I'd rather have the three finger draw. Let's 
try a few or two more. You're at full draw. So, I put about 100 rounds and what do I think? I love this thing, it's got a lot of power and it's very efficient. Its initial draw weight is a lot higher than a 100 pound fiberglass barbell. It feels more like a 120 pound fiberglass barbell than, uh, so, so because it's much more reflex initially. Um, and it's laminated in construction so the bow limbs are lighter so it shoots the arrows faster. Um, I've only tested this with 10 GPP, I haven't dropped down to 10 GPP. Um, you can if you want. I'd contact me school before you do that though. Um, I, I like shooting heavier GPPs anyways. So 1000 uh, grain is the minimum arrow weights I use on these. So they don't fly that fast. They're not like going like 220 FPS, but still it, it does pack a lot of punch. 1000 grain hitting a target, like you can see the, the, the target moving. Like this is a machine. I love it. It's not the heaviest bow I have, but it's very efficient. Um, it shoots better than my 130 pound wood bow. For the price, it's reasonable. You know, it's it's in the 600 mark, 500, 600 dollar mark, depending on the draw weight you get, of course, and the shipping and the location you are. Um, this is not a cheap bow. This is not a fiberglass bow here, but it's also not an expensive bow, like a horn bow that is over $3,000. Me personally, I would barely shoot a horn bow that's over 100 pounds. It's just too expensive. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I highly recommend um, Me Skull's products. So if, you, if you're interested, just check out MR Bows. And he has the T-Ron model and the Despo model, as well as some other models that I haven't tried out yet. This is Jack from Mr. Archer.